Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay Afat and in this video tutorial, we're going to be understanding what are variables and data types in JavaScript. So since this is a very beginner level tutorial, we'll just take a little bit of theory on variables and we'll see the data types and then we'll jump to the programming part. That is, we'll jump to the Visual Studio code. So as you can see on the screen, I have a little bit of jargon filled definitions for variables. So these are the bookish definitions which you can find on the internet also. So let me just quickly read through them and then we'll see an explanation. So a variable provides us with a named storage that our programs can manipulate. So this is definition number one. Another type of definition would be variables are used to store information to be referenced and manipulated in the computer program. So pretty much similar to the first one, just with a little bit of more words, complex words actually. And then in programming, a variable is a value that can change. Hence actually the name variable. Variable basically means an entity that can variate or change and depending on the condition or the information passed to the program. So after reading these three definitions, it sounds pretty complex, but of course it's very easy concept that is variables and data types. And if you're coming from any other programming language, and if you have any other experience of any programming language, pretty much the same concept is being applied over here of variables and data types with a little bit of difference. So for the absolute beginners to give you a context, let me just give you a scenario. So on this right hand side, what you can see is our basic diagram of a desktop. So in a computer system, what you have is a RAM, which is actually acting as your primary memory. So whenever you execute a program or whenever you open a, any application or any software, what happens is in the RAM, some memory is being allocated. Okay. So let's say you have opened your Chrome browser. So then some memory will be allocated for the Chrome browser to run in the RAM. Similarly, our JavaScript program, whenever runs in the Chrome browser or whenever it is running, it is basically existing in the RAM, right? So our RAM is basically divided into small, small memory blocks and each of these memory blocks has some hexadecimal or some binary address, which is pretty weird and long. So you obviously cannot remember as a human being. So it's some hexadecimal values also like FF, 0x and something like that. So when you create a variable, what happens is in the memory, you allocate some portion of the memory and you give it a name. Okay. So that's why we have a named storage over here. So what you do is we allocate this memory and we say, okay, I'm going to name it a. So even though it has an address, which is very weird to remember, we give an alias name that is an extra name and we call it a. So in JavaScript, it goes something like this. We have to say where a, and let's say we are storing a number five. Okay. And then semicolon. So in this memory block, we have the value of five. So we'll talk about the syntax when we actually get into the practical part, but here's what the scenario is happening in the behind the scenes in the memory. Okay. Now the next obvious question that you must be having is why variables? Why do we need variables? Right? So the most simple answer to this is to store data. That's the most simple way I can answer you why you need variables. Now imagine a program wherein you are taking values from users of a rectangle. So you're taking length and breadth and your program is calculating the area of rectangle. So when you take those values of length and breadth, you need to store them in certain variables because you want to perform some mathematical operations, right? You have a formula to calculate area. So in that case, you'll require some variables. Now, obviously as a human being, you cannot remember each and every memory address, right? So you cannot remember these numbers. So these memory addresses are big numbers, which only a machine can read. So this variable helps us by giving it that memory block, another name, and then we can use this name to access that same memory block. Okay. So this is a basic explanation of variables. Now let's move on to the types of variables or data types of variables in JavaScript. Okay. So now that you've understood the concept of variables, every variable will have a type and basically type means what kind of data is being stored. So variable where a can store a number, let's say it's five. It can probably store a string, which will have some name ABC and it can store Boolean and so on and so forth. So of course, every programming will have a set of data types, which are unique to them. So since we are dealing with JavaScript, we have these many data types as you can see in the tree structure. So we have primitive data types, which are three different types of primitive data types, number, string, and Boolean. Then we have some other data types or trivial data types, which are actually primitive only just that they have one more name that is trivial or other types, which is null and undefined. So this is one, two, and three. So we have numbers, we have strings, and we have Boolean as primitive types. Again, we have null and undefined also as primitive types, but they are also called trivial or other types. And lastly, we have composite types, which are complex types, basically, which consist of objects and arrays. So we'll talk about complex or composite types in further videos, wherein I'll have separate videos for each of these type. 
Right now we'll just deal with these three primitive types in the programming part. So before moving to the visual code text editor, that is the practical side, these are two very important points that you need to understand for JavaScript, specifically for JavaScript. So let me just read it out and I'll explain to you. So JavaScript is loosely typed programming language. And the second point says JavaScript is dynamically typed scripting language or programming language. It's one and the same thing because we are on the client side scripting. Now remember these two keywords loosely and dynamically typed. Okay. Now let's move on to the programming part and I'll explain to you what is loosely and dynamically mean by showing you examples. And we'll also see how to create variables and different variations of the primitive types as well. Okay. So as you can see, I have my text editor open that is Visual Studio Code. And this is our basic HTML document. Inside that we have our script tag, but here we have declared certain variables. So in JavaScript, this is how you create a variable. Now, if you're coming from a C++ or Java background, this might look a little bit weird to you, right? Because in C++ and Java, we used to be like int x equals to five and something like that, right? We, we already had a data type, but here you can see there is no data type. We are only using the keyword var. So this is where that loosely typed keyword comes into picture. That is JS is loosely typed. What this line means is you don't have to define the data type of the variable when you create the variable. Okay. So you don't have to tell what data type it is initially. So what happens is whatever the type of value you pass in the variable automatically the data type will change. And this is where the second definition or second point or second property of JavaScript comes into picture. That is JS is dynamically typed which means whatever value you pass, depending on the type of value, the data type of the variable will change. Now here you can see we have three different types of variables. So the first one is a number type because we are passing a number in it. Second one is a string because I'm passing a name, Tanmay Sakpal, yeah, that's my name. And the third one is a flag variable, which is having a Boolean value, which can have two or false. So I can change this to false also. Okay, so these are the three basic variables that is the primitive types that we just saw in the previous digital blackboard. So again, the way you create a variable, you type in var, then you give the name and you can assign a value right there itself, or you can just declare it and later on assign the value. So this is just declaration and this is initialization and you can do both in one single line. You can see this is that example wherein I've also declared a variable named num and I've initialized the value of 16. Okay. So now when you're creating variables, there are certain rules to create variables that is to assign names to the variables. Okay. So basically what I mean is there are certain naming conventions being followed, which are known as identifiers. So the rules for creating an identifier, basically identifier is the name that you give to a variable in JavaScript are as follows. So the name of the identifier should not be any predefined keyword. So you cannot name your variable as var. Okay. So I cannot say var var. So this is going to give you an error. You can see the error is showing because var is a predefined JavaScript keyword. So you cannot use that. Then the first character must be a letter or an underscore or a dollar sign. It cannot be anything else. So I cannot start with var at the rate. So this is again going to be giving me an error. However, I can start off with underscore or a dollar sign. And then the next characters may be any letter or digit or number or underscore as you wish. So you can have num1 or you can have num dollar something in between and lastly variables are case sensitive so var num and if i create one more variable and if i say num where n is capital then this is different and this is different so this is what case sensitive means so there are two different variables because n is capital so these are the naming conventions and i hope they are clear in your mind probably you can write them or note them down if you're an absolute beginner or you can just take a screenshot so lastly, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, the last statement of this script tag, wherein I have a JavaScript line is document dot write num. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this num variable whose value is 16 and I'm just printing it on the web browser. So let's try to run this default dot HTML. Okay. So as you can see, I just opened that document. I'm not going live as of now. I'm not using the live server plugin because I just wanted to show you this printing. And then there is another function which you can use which I just want to introduce over here is the alert function. So inside this alert, I'm just going to write the num and I know I have not talked about functions, but just type along with me. I'm going to comment this document dot write statement, save this 
and when I run this, there you go, you can see we got a pop-up message saying this page says 16. The 16 is this number variable. I'm just gonna say okay. So this is what this function does. So I just wanted to introduce this so that in further videos when we use it, you feel comfortable. So one more thing that I wanted to show is, as I mentioned, JavaScript is dynamically typed. Which means the data type of the variable changes depending upon what value you pass. So here you can see this num is storing 16. That's why it is a number. So what I'm going to do is add this line. I'm going to say num is equal to and I'm going to say Tanmay, which is my name. So now again, I'm going to just pop up this message in the alert. Just save this and refresh this. And there you go. Now it is saying Tanmay. So this means that initially our num variable was a number, but at this line, because of course the code runs line by line at this line, the num variable changed its data type to string because we stored a string in it. So this is what is meant by JavaScript is dynamically typed. And of course, you know what is JavaScript is loosely typed, right? Because we don't have to specify the data type initially. We don't have to say int. This will give you an error. So it doesn't work in JavaScript like that. So JS is loosely typed or another way to say it is JS is not strictly typed. So whenever you see a programming language is strictly typed, it means that the data type or whatever type of data is being stored has to be specified before. So that's it for this video guys. This was just a basic fundamentals on JavaScript variables and data types. And I hope you have a good idea about the features that is JavaScript is dynamically and loosely typed. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. Do share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.